to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ matthew chapter 19 verse number six jesus said therefore what God has joined together, let not man put asunder. We welcome you today to our study of godly homes in an ungodly world. In today's lesson, we're thinking about God's laws on marriage, divorce, and remarriage. And we're so glad that you've joined us for our study together today. We want to encourage you, if you don't have it handy, to locate your Bible and have it ready as we're going to be looking to the Word of God for our final authority in all things about the home. Friend, today's lesson is being brought to you by members and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether that be on Sunday or Wednesday, you would be an honored guest at any of their Bible study opportunities. If you'd like to know more about the church, just we'll be glad to sit down and study with you. If you've got a question about salvation or something you may have heard, you'll find people there at the church who love God, who love others, and who are more than willing to help in any way. And friend, we also want to help you in your desire to know more about God and His will. Won't you check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com? From there, you can find a wide variety of good Bible study materials. We have lessons in video, audio lessons, transcripts, study questions, written material, just a vast library of good Bible study material, and it's available free of charge from our website, thegospelofchrist.com. And if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, you can, from our website, fill out a media request form that's available free to you as a digital download, or you can request a DVD or CD. And as always, we want to encourage each one of us to make sure that we're striving to let the Bible be the guide in everything that we say and do. Our motive at the gospel of Christ is out of love. We want to take the whole gospel to the whole world so that men and women can spend eternity with the Heavenly Father. Today, as we think about this lesson, God's laws on marriage, divorce, and remarriage, friend, this is a subject that is so important for our world and for the home today. There's so much confusion about marriage. There, there's so much divorce and, and remarriage, and, and we want to know what does God think about that, and how does that affect the home and make it a godly home? And so let's begin at the beginning by thinking about God's original plan, His original paradigm for the home. Open your Bible, if you would, to Genesis chapter 2, where we're going to learn the first thing about God's law on marriage. Genesis chapter 2 is where God instituted marriage and the home, and here we find His original plan for marriage. Genesis chapter 2, notice what the Bible says in verse number 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two, they two, shall become one flesh. What is God's original plan and intent for marriage? Friend, it's such a simple plan. A man is to leave father and, father and mother and cleave to his wife. You see, before marriage, he was under father and mother's house, under their home, and under their guidelines directed by God and His Word. But when he takes on that wife, when he decides to marry, he is creating a new family unit. And he is to leave father and mother, be joined to his wife, and now they have one mindset and one goal to encourage and to help one another. Friend, with this idea, please understand that father and mother 
also play a big part in making it possible for the husband and wife to be what they want to be. We have to sometimes let them make their own mistakes, their own decisions. We want to encourage and we want to help, but if they're going to be their own individual family unit, well, sometimes we've got to back off and let them do that so that they can merge together as one and be what God wants them to be in the family and in the home. And so God's original plan, one man, one woman, leaving father and mother, being joined together for life. In God's original plan, hear me well, in God's original plan, it was for life. Divorce was not a part of God's original plan. God wanted man and woman to stay together, and He still does, to stay together for life. That's how marriage ought to be, to help one another, to encourage, and to uplift one another. Now, Jesus spoke on the subject of marriage because there was mass confusion about it in His day and age. And so a couple of passages I want you to look at with me next are found in Matthew chapter 19 and Matthew chapter 5. Would you open your Bible to Jesus' discussion on marriage in Matthew chapter 19? I want you to begin reading with me in Matthew 19 verse number 1. Jesus said this, now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these sayings that He departed from Galilee and came to the region of Judea beyond the Jordan. And great multitudes followed Him, and He healed them there. The Pharisees also came to Jesus, testing Him and saying to Him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? And He answered and said to them, Have you not read? that He who made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they're no longer two but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, let not man put asunder. They said to Him, Why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? Jesus said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, permitted you to divorce your wives, but notice this, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery, and whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. Although it was given as an option, not as a command, the innocent party in Matthew 19.9 does have the right for fornication to remarry. Nothing is said about the guilty party. The guilty party is not given that right. And thus, any divorce, when we talk about God's law on marriage, divorce, and remarriage, any divorce that occurs for unlawful reasons other than fornication, which the word fornication is the Greek word pornea, which means illicit, unlicensed sexual activity outside the bonds of marriage. The only lawful activity involved in that is Hebrews 13, 4. Marriage is honorable, the bed undefiled. God has created that union between one man and one woman, including the sexual union, to be right and holy and good. Outside of that, when there are out, uh, sexual activity outside of that, that's contrary to God's will, and it demands. God demands if people divorce for unlawful reasons, they both remain single and celibate or be reconciled. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 10 and 11. Now, this is also repeated by Jesus in Matthew 5, verses 31 and 32. And you can hear uh, what the, the, the Jews here. They had the idea, one, one side had the idea that you could divorce for any reason. Another had the idea that you couldn't divorce for any reason. Then there were those who stuck to what the Bible says about fornication. And Jesus says, they say, well, Moses, why did Moses command? And Jesus said, wait a minute now. Moses permitted you. Don't say command. Moses permitted you. Why? Because of the hardness of your heart. Your heart was already hardened and your mind was made up. Moses permitted you to divorce your wives. But listen to this. From the beginning, it was not so. Friend, I hope you'll listen real carefully. God does not want divorce. Does He allow an exception on the innocent party for fornication? There's no doubt that He does. But friend, God does not want divorce. From the beginning, it was not so. What God has joined together, 
the Bible says man is not to put asunder. And so when we think about God's law on marriage, divorce was not in the original plan. And except for fornication, people ought to stay together and try to work things out in marriage. Now, let's realize when we talk about fornication, fornication, uh, which would include the sin of adultery, it's not point in time action. Some people say, well, if I commit fornication, I can be forgiven of that, and then I can, no, wait a minute now. Fornication is something one lives in. Someone says, well, I can stop this by, fornication is something you live in, and it's not just point in time action. Paul said in Colossians 3, verses 5 through 7, fornication, among other sins, fornication they had lived in. And so when we talk about the action of fornication, People who are divorced unscripturally are living in fornication. We're not just talking about the action. We're talking about that becomes a lifestyle. And the point is this. Therefore, to repent of fornication, which you can live in, you've got to stop the sin by putting away one's unscriptural mate and remaining single. Meaning this, if two people are in a marriage that is not right in God's sight. It's an unlawful marriage. They did not divorce for fornication and they're now remarried and it's not the kind of marriage that God approves of. Can they just repent of the fornication and continue in the marriage? Well, friend, as we noted, Colossians 3, verses 5 through 7, they lived in these sins and one of them was fornication. That lifestyle, as long as one is in that unlawful marriage, it's not a lifestyle that God's pleased with and you've got to repent to stop that, uh, when we think about sin, think about this with me. If I'm committing some sin in my life, can I just say I'm sorry for that and keep doing that? Well, that's never the idea. If, I, if, I'm, if I've got a problem with drinking, then I can't just say I'm sorry for drinking and keep doing it. If I've got a problem with lying, I can't say I'm sorry for lying and keep lying. If fornication is something you live in, you can't just say you're sorry for it and then keep living in it. You've got to repent. And repentance means stopping the sin, doing our best to stop that sin, turn from that, and turn to God. And thus, one who is in an unlawful marriage cannot continue in that and be right in God's sight. They've got to stop that sin and live a life that's pleasing to Almighty God. But friend, let's also realize this. One of the main things we want to emphasize is found in Malachi chapter 2 verse 16. Would you open your Bible with me to Malachi chapter 2 right before the start of the New Testament? Look in Malachi chapter 2 and I want you to notice what God says in this passage about divorce. Look at what the scripture says in verse number 16. For the Lord God of Israel says that He hates divorce. It covers one's garments with violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. What about divorce? How does God feel about that? God hates it. That is, that is not something, you know, when we hear thing God, something God hates, our ears definitely ought to perk up. Why does God hate divorce? Well, it tells us. It is a, the text says in Malachi 2 verse 16, it covers one's garments with violence. It is a, you think of violent acts. Think of violent acts against other people. Murder, uh, domestic assault, you think of uh, sexual assault, you think of uh, uh, whatever it may be, some kind of violent act against somebody else. And we think, yeah, man, that's a violent act. Divorce is a violent act. It rips apart the home that God put in place to help one another. Think about the trauma involved in that. Think about the emotional baggage. Think about how that's going to affect the children in that home and how that trickles down to society and how our view of marriage is, is not as lofty as it ought to be. It, it, it's against the will of God and God hates divorce. Do I understand that there's a scriptural reason for it? Sure I do. But friend, the violence attributed to the act of divorce, I think sometimes we underestimate how that affects the home and how that affects everyone in the home and how we need to make sure that we maintain the integrity of, you know, 
We need, the commi we need real commitment. What do we need today to help the home and marriage? We need people who make a commitment for better or for worse, no matter what comes, for sickness or health, better or worse, how good it is, how bad it is, we're going to make a commitment to work it out, to help one another. Is it always going to be super easy? Is it always going to be smooth sailing? And that's not the idea. There are going to be challenges. There are going to be difficulties there. There are going to be problems that arise. But if you make that commitment to one another, no matter what, my friend, it's going to be harder to break up a marriage like that. Another passage that I'd like for you to look at with me about marriage and God's law and divorce as well involved in that is found under the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 24 I want to ask you, if you would, to take your Bible and turn to Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 1 through 4. In this context, and it's likely what they're referencing in Matthew chapter 19, Moses, because of the hardness of their heart, permitted them uh, to divorce their wives, but even then it wasn't God's plan, and even then it was very likely the case that it was for fornication or sexual immorality. Look in Deuteronomy 24, verses 1 through 4. The Bible says, when a man takes a wife and marries her, and it happens that she finds no favor in his eyes because he has found some uncleanness in her, and he writes her a certificate of divorce, puts it in her hand, and sends her out of his house, when she's departed from his house and goes away and becomes another man's wife, if the latter ha husband detests her and writes her a certificate of divorce, puts it in her hand and sends her out of his house, or if the latter husband who dies or took her his wife, then her former husband who divorced her must not take her back to be his wife after she has defiled him, for that is an abomination before the Lord, and you shall not bring sin on the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. And so here, Moses is permitting, like Jesus said, but listen to the reason. Because of uncleanness. It's very possible that that word for uncleanness would carry the idea of sexual immorality and fornication. This was permitted by Moses because of the hardness of the people's heart. But again, I want you to hear the words of Jesus about this. Matthew 19, verses 7 through 8. From the beginning, it was not God's intention that there be divorce. And so over and over again, as we're thinking about God's law of marriage, friend, it's the case that God wants people to stay together, to work it out, to do the best they can, to remain in that situation and help one another live a good life and get to heaven. Well, someone says, well, what about those people who may not have known God's law, may have ignored God's law, or may have just learned God's law about unlawful marriages. From those who are in an unlawful marriage, in the Bible, those who were in unlawful or unscriptural marriages had to repent and get out of those to be right with God. Let me show you that from the Bible. I want you to open to Ezra chapter 9 and 10. Here's what's happened. In the book of Ezra, God told His people, God had already commanded, it was part of His law under the Old Testament, God told His people not to intermarry with the heathens. That was wrong. That was against God's law on marriage. God told them not to do it. They did it anyway. They broke God's law on marriage and entered into a marriage that was unlawful or unscriptural in God's sight. And in Ezra chapter chapter 10. I want you to look at what Ezra says. Uh, he's now praying for these people who are in these unscriptural marriages. Not right in God's eyes. God told them not to do it. And notice Ezra 10 beginning in verse 1. Now while Ezra was praying, while he was confessing, weeping, and bowing down before the house of God, a very large assembly of men and women and children gathered to him from Israel, for the people wept very bitterly. And Shechaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, spoke up and said to Ezra, We have trespassed against our God, have taken pagan wives from the people of the land, yet now there is hope in Israel in spite of this. Well, what is that hope? Look in verse 3. Now therefore, let us make a covenant with our God, watch this, to put away all these wives, those who have been born to them, according to the advice of my master, 
and of those who tremble at the commandment of our God and let it be done according to the law. What did real repentance require? For those who were in unscriptural marriages in Ezra chapter 10, they had to repent, which meant they had to put those people away and not continue in that ungodly action. You see, repentance demands stopping the sin. Colossians 3 verse 7, you can't live in fornication, which means they had to put away the unlawful mate and live a life that was pleasing to Almighty God. Someone says, well, what about the family? What about the children? Friend, no doubt, no doubt there's going to be heartache involved in that. But if it's not right in God's eyes, it's not God's fault that they entered into something that wasn't right in His sight and to live in accordance with His law. You know, sometimes people have to suffer to do what's right. Wouldn't you agree with that? Moses chose rather to suffer affliction than with the people of God than partake in the pleasures of Egypt. Did Moses suffer? for choosing what was right and doing what was right? Absolutely. And friends, sometimes people who've entered into sins that are not right have to get out of those, and there may be suffering involved in that. And so when we think about God's law on marriage, we've got to realize it's designed to be for life. Only reason for divorce is fornication. Then and only then can the innocent party remarry, and those who find themselves in unscriptural marriages You've got to stop that, get out of that, repent of that to live right with God. Then in Mark chapter 10, verses 11 and 12, the Bible is going to teach us that if a husband or wife divorces their mate for unlawful reasons and they marry somebody else, they are committing adultery when they do that. Look in your Bible in Mark chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. What about remarriage? Can you just remarry anybody you want, divorce somebody and remarry anybody you want? The Lord teaches that if someone divorces for unlawful reasons and they marry somebody else, they're committing adultery. And we know that an adulterer cannot be right with God. Look in Mark chapter 10. Listen to the clarity of Jesus' words in Mark chapter 10. Verses 11 and 12. Jesus said this, So He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if a woman divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And so if that divorce is not lawful, and then they go out and marry somebody else, they're committing adultery. That's very simple and very plain, and thus one has the option of remain, remaining in the marriage, working things out, or living a celibate and single life, which would be demanded if one is divorced from an, a marriage unlawfully. And see, friend, this is the idea we're trying to drive home. Jesus and the Bible teaches that a lawful marriage is designed to last until death. I want you to see this from the Bible. You know, we hear these words, until death do us part. Where does that idea come from? Well, friend, it's found in the Bible. Turn in your New Testament to Romans chapter 7. The principle is definitely found in the Bible. Turn to Romans chapter 7. And I want you to see what the Bible says beginning in verse number 1. Romans chapter 7. I'd like for you to look in verse number 1. Paul says this, Or do you not know, brethren, that, for I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as she lives. Listen to that, as long as she lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband lives, she marries another, she'll be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she has married another man. Paul's going to go on and say he was talking about the law, how they died to the old law, and they could be married to Christ. But look at the illustration from marriage. If while this woman's husband is alive, she goes out and marries another, she's an adulterer. If he dies, death ends marriage, and she could remarry. But not while he's alive. That's contrary to the will of God. And so we learn death Marriage is to last for a lifetime. Death ends marriage, 
And of course, someone who's had a spouse who's died, they have the right to remarry, as 1 Corinthians 7 verse 39 will say, only in the Lord, according to God's commands and with keeping of the teaching of God. But friend, as we think about marriage, I want you to see today as well that a, a good, right marriage is something that is honorable and right and holy in the sight of God. Listen to Hebrews 13, 4. Marriage is honorable, the bed undefiled, whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. What about a good, holy, a good marriage that puts God first, that one man and one woman for life, fighting the good fight every day? That's honorable. That gives God glory and honor. Did we say it's always going to be easy? That's not the idea. Are there going to be uphill challenges? Are there going to be battles and fights and difficulties? Sure, anybody, there's going to be challenges. But friend, when we're working together, when we're trying to make God the center and give Him glory, that brings honor and glory to Almighty God. And so we hope today that we have emphasized God's law on marriage from the beginning God wanted one man, one woman, for life to help one another get to heaven. Jesus, no doubt, gave the exception to the innocent party for fornication, but even God, He hates divorce. He doesn't want that to occur, and we want to do everything possible to work that out and to be what God wants us to be. And so, friend, let's do our best to live good, holy lives. Let, let's be good listeners. Let's be forgiving. Let's try to help one another, and let's make it our aim. Here's what the Bible, Genesis 2 verse 18, God saw that it was not good for man to be alone. He made him a helper comparable to them. If you found a mate in this life, how blessed you are with somebody that can help you through life and ultimately help you spiritually to be what God wants you to be. And so again, we're so glad that you've joined us for our study of godly homes in an ungodly world. And let's make our marriages great. Let's work on them. Let's encourage and help one another. And let's do everything we can to ultimately get to heaven. We hope you'll join us next time as we think more about godly homes in an ungodly world. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the